command aliases. Okay, let's say I type alias and hit enter. That shows me a list of all the aliases and it shows it as if it's the command that was given to create the alias. As you can see, I, or there is an al existing, the alias is LL and it's equivalent to typing LS minus LAHG and the G here is for colored. In other words, I get a colored listing. As you can see, aliases are for creating an alias for a command. So I create like a name for a whole command and the command, when I'm assigning it, I put it in quotation marks. Maybe double quotes would work too, but I don't know. It's kind of like the way it works in PHP when you're quoting a string. Okay, I'm going to show you that typing LL will actually do what is specified here. Okay, it gives a long listing. It lists all files, including the hidden files, and it's in color. And it gives it in human readable form. By the way, the LL command already exists in some Unix systems, so it's better to, you know, before you create an alias and use a certain name, you need to make sure that that command or it doesn't already exist, or you don't want to rename a command or something, or create an alias for something that someone already put in to the system as an alias or as a built-in command or whatever. Okay, so let me type which LL and see what happens. I guess that shows that it can't find an LL as a, you know, as a program, so it must be an alias since it works and does something. Okay, also there's an unalias command, so if I say unalias LL and then, okay, then I try to use LL, well, it doesn't exist anymore. Let me see if I go into a subshell, if it would recreate it. Okay, now let me try LL. Okay, that's because when I went into the subshell, it, it ran the .bashrc file again. And that's where I declared my alias for LL. Let me show you that bashrc file, by the way. Well, let me just go into a login shell. cat.bashrc. Okay, this is what my bashrc looks like. See, this is what was in there before, and then for this video, I added this alias here, okay? And as you can recall, the bash rc gets executed within my bash profile also, so that way I have access to this in the login shell, not just in subshells. Okay, so now I showed how to use the alias and the unalias commands. Let me show an example of alias that uses, like, lots of quotation marks. Okay. All right, notice there's two single quotes here on the outside, so I can specify the whole command, and then the command itself that I'm specifying has a quotation mark in it. Now, let me type in that alias. Okay, see, it works. Now, if I wanted to use a single quote in here, I would just backslash escape it, so that it doesn't look like the closing um, quotation. This works very similar to the way it does in most other languages, including PHP, the way that the single and double quotes work, and how to use them. Okay, now, let me see if I go into a subshell, whether that alias would work. Hmm, that's strange. Didn't even give me the prompt back. Let me cancel out. I wonder why that happened. Let me try to... How about LL? Okay, control L. Control C. Let me see what aliases exist. Okay, that alias doesn't exist in there. Maybe say is a command, okay? Let's see. Here, let me put a control D. Okay, I guess say is a command already. Let me see. Which say? Yeah, it is a command. I don't know what it does. Anyways, okay, say... Okay, so it makes the computer talk, that's what it does. All right, exit. Okay, so as you can see that well, if I just create an alias at the command prompt, that doesn't traverse into a subshell, okay? Once I start a subshell, that alias doesn't exist there. I think we're gonna learn about the export command later, which would allow an alias that's been declared to traverse that boundary between a shell and its subshell. Either way, if you include it in the bash rc file like I did, you don't have to worry about using the export command to make it traverse that barrier I was talking about.